So I have actually got 20 minutes scheduled now, but I am, I am going to only be 10 uh, maximum, uh, I promise you. Uh, and, and I promise you as well, I'm not going to be too salesy in this section, but I will be talking specifically about what we do um, at Ogilvy Change. So if we can move on to the, to the first slide. Um, just to give you um, a bit of uh, background on me. So I joined uh, to head up the team last year, um, taking over from our co-founder, Jez Groom, who's, who's here today uh, in his uh, exciting new role, and, and many of you may remember from previous years. Um, as I said earlier, this is my first uh, nudge stock this year, um, having come back from, um, from four years in Australia. And uh, I guess without tooting my own horn too much, um, in Australia, I've done lots of exciting things like, um, you know, developing the world's most successful um, stop smoking app and, and winning a global campaign of the year for a campaign on, on domestic violence. And, but really what really excited me about the opportunity to come and work um, with Ogilvy Change and work with Rory and the team um, was that what we do at Ogilvy Change is, is tremendously exciting because not only the brilliant work, which I'll talk about in a moment, but the way that the work, or the work that we do um, operates in a realm where we don't have some of those same restrictions, or if you like to use behavioral economics parlance, framing devices that exist in a lot of other communications fields. So, you know, the briefs we get aren't, aren't framed just in terms of advertising uh, or in terms of a particular channel. Um, and often, actually, there isn't that really powerful framing device of even a budget for us to work for. Um, you know, if you're given one million pounds to work with, then naturally you're probably going to think of some big budget um, TV or outdoor advertising campaigns. If you're given 10,000 pounds, then you might restrict yourselves maybe just to, to some print uh, executions. Um, but we don't, we don't operate kind of within those constraints, I guess, if you like. So as Winston Churchill once said, um, we have run out of money, we will have to think. Um, and I think that's a, that's a really nice encapsulation to a certain extent of, of what we do, not to say that we operate on no budget, obviously. Um, so the first thing I did when I sort of joined uh, last year was, was to try and get a picture of the work that we have been doing over the last four years as we changed. We had our fourth anniversary in February. Um, and how we harness the power of behavioral science um, to deliver success for our clients, because that's the passion of all of us who work within Ogilvy Change. Um, and I'd hope it's your passion too, because frankly, otherwise, why would you come to Nudgestock unless you're passionate about behavioral economics and behavioral science? So I make no apologies today for selling the work that we do. Um, and I think this line that our colleagues at Coley Porter Bell have come up with um, to summarize the work that we do at Ogilvy Change encapsulates it really well, which is that we design clever ways to transform behavior it did originally say human behavior on here, um, but um, we haven't actually done much work with animals. Um, but having seen Isabel's talk earlier, um, I'd really love to do a project on uh, bonobo monkeys if we can. Um, they don't tend to issue a lot of briefs, though, uh, I tend to find. Um, so you'll hopefully have seen our ad in Nudge Stock News, which tells you a little bit about what we do. But I'm going to give a very a bit, a big, a bit brief overview and a little bit about us now. So the way we talk about ourselves is um, little ideas from big thinkers. And that's a little bit self-aggrandizing, uh, if I'm honest, without talking about us being big thinkers. But everyone on the team does have a really deep, practical, and academic understanding of the disciplines of behavioral science. Um, today is a perfect example of that. Um, the agenda and the speakers that we've come up with today is both you know, people who are known to us within the behavioral economics world, but also um, people that we, that members of the team, have recommended, have seen speak, um, and really enjoyed their work. Um, and that just gives you an understanding of how passionate and knowledgeable everyone is on the team. So, and the reason we refer to little ideas is because um, often the, the work that we do might be very small tweaks. They might be a few words in a call center script. They might be a change of buttons on a website. But the effects of those things can be huge. And to illustrate that, I've just got three examples, um, three different sectors that we've worked in and some of the results we've delivered to some of those clients with some of those small tweaks. So you see here, for some work we do, we've done with airlines, we've delivered an incremental 26 million pounds a year, and six million pounds um, just simply changing some button copy and layout. Um, we've rearranged some store elements for a newspaper, which delivered a 4.5% sales increase. Um, and we've changed some donation buttons for a charity, which delivered 850,000 pounds in incremental revenue for them. So you can see, actually, these small changes have, do have really big effects. The simplest way to explain what we do is that we take a foundation of science that exists within the behavioral economics and behavioral science worlds um, and within the knowledge within the team. 
We combine that with the power of the creativity within the Ogilvy Group, because we obviously are a communications network and a creatively led organization. And those two things together is what creates effective behavior change. Um, and this is not a UK thing, uh, a UK phenomenon, as we can demonstrate here. Um, these are some of our colleagues in our Sydney, Milan, uh, Toronto, and um, New Zealand offices, and, and hello to them if they're watching on the live stream, uh, who send us some photos, but we do have a presence in 10 markets globally, uh, and, and great professionals working in a number of different markets. And one of the things that we like to say as Ogilvy Change is that one of the great things about working with behavioral science, psychology, behavioral economics, is that psychologically, people are more similar than they are different. And this really ties in with particularly what Isabel was saying. Um, that, you know, because we, these are grounded in evolutionary, uh, the evolutionary development of humans, these principles, um, they can apply in different markets and to in different contexts and in different cultures. And we've done work in over 30 countries globally now and been able to see these same effects. So just to describe a little bit about um, what we do, there's three core um, products that we have. Um, the first one is what we call interventions, and these are um, scientifically verified uh, and um, assessed nudges that we would implement in a number of different contexts, and those contexts are incredibly varied. So to give you an example, as I mentioned already, we've done, an, uh, we've done a lot of work working in contact centers uh, where we've seen figures like 200% increase in retention rates to developing a hand stamp that improved hand hygiene in a food processing plant, which is obviously a major issue. As you can imagine, if, if hands aren't washed in a food processing plant, the consequences are, are potentially disastrous. Um, we were able to improve hand hygiene rates, so the levels of hand washing by 63%. And we've also been able to reduce crime in another context with a case study you may have seen in previous years here, by 24% um, through painting some babies' faces on some shop shutters. All of these have been validated, as I say, scientifically and proven to be effective um, because, and one of the exciting things that I can, I can say to you here today, particularly for the clients in the room, because we validate them in that way, we can actually be paid based on the effectiveness of our interventions. I thought that might get some of the clients in the room interested. Um, the second product that we have is our training products, and again, very excitingly, I can announce, as you might have seen in our stand over in the corner there, um, we're launching our new uh, training products, the Nudge Stock Academy. So this is a one-day training course that is uh, suitable for individuals if you want to learn more about behavioral science, and a three-day training course which is designed for organizations. So you, a, group of, uh, or, a group of individuals from an organization can take our training course over three days and work on a specific behavioral problem with us. Um, and we've, de we've delivered training for a number of major organizations uh, around the world, including ITV and Kimberly Clark. And our third product um, is what we call consultancy. And this can be, um, this is effectively optimizing existing communications um, using behavioral science principles. And again, that can be in a whole range of contexts. So I've mentioned already about call center scripts. We've also done it with direct marketing materials. Um, and the example that you'll see here is actually a menu. So we've been able to, uh, to achieve um, significant changes in behavior through optimizing of menus in bars. And the other exciting uh, thing that I can announce in terms of our consultancy product is our pre-testing. So this is using behavioral science principles to get to understand what the subconscious drivers of behavior are. Behavior are. So you can test communications before they go in market. You will, you will see also at our National Stock Academy stand, we have our trigger tool, which um, it's funny, actually Tinder's come up quite a lot today. But, um, but we, this is a research tool that is based on Tinder methodology. Now, don't ask how we came up with that. Um, but it is, uh, it's, it's, um, we believe, the only uh, research vehicle in the world that uses that methodology. Uh, and if you're interested in hearing more about it, then please go and speak to one of our representatives uh, around today. So that's a very quick kind of overview of, uh, of what we do. But one of the things that happens every year at Nudge Stock is people say, this stuff is really fascinating. I really love what you do. How do I learn more? Now, many of you, how many in the room are subscribers to Obehave have been subscribed? Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a good, good 60%, 70%. Great. Um, you will have noticed that we, we were a little bit cryptic in the last one, saying this was the last edition of, it, of its type. Um, and the reason for that is, is that I can exclusively announce uh, that we'll be launching the Obehave podcast in coming weeks. So those of you who want to hear more from any of the speakers today, we're going to be recording uh, some additional content and interviews um, with our speakers. Um, if you want to hear some of those um, interviews while they happen today, whilst you're in the room, um, they'll be taking place downstairs um, during the lunch break. Um, but we'll also um, be, obviously, you'll be able to hear lots more from Rory uh, and from the team uh, on some of the exciting work that we're doing and some of the new, um, the new studies 
uh, that are released. So if you want to hear more about any of that work and you want to speak to any of us um, about uh, any of the challenges that you might be facing that we can help with, this is our extremely handsome team um, who, uh, uh, who will be um, walking around today. Um, you will notice them because some of them will be wearing nudge stock, these nudge stock badges, nudge stock academy badges. Um, please feel free to speak to any of them. Uh, and we'd love to talk to you more. Thanks very much. So just before, um, uh, before I wander off, um, I'll introduce our next speaker. So we're delighted to uh, welcome Molly Crockett, uh, who is an associate professor at the uh, Department of Experimental Psychology in Oxford. Um, she is going to be talking to us about Filthy Lucre, how moral transgressions corrupt the value of money. Welcome, Molly. Thank you.